Uh, there's still four minutes left in the Punisher's game, and there's like six people watching it, so yeah. wait a few minutes. Just this might start for a bit. I gotta go with that, and then go to that. Yeah. So that's rolling now, okay?
About to get underway here. This is the opening round match for both of these teams. This is the Road to the World Outdoor Ball Hockey Championships. Friday night, July 10th, 2015, ballhockey.com Athletic Center. My name is Kevin Jack. Brandon Scram is the videographer this evening. We are WeStream. In the red, we have the Niagara Warriors. Sorry, in the red, we have the Vicious Alpacas. In the black and green camo, we have the Niagara Warriors. This play is underway. Hard four check there, Tyler Scram. 12 comes back at him pretty strong. Those two jostling early in this game. Just 15 seconds old and already some animosity between these two teams. It's the Warriors now. Ferguson throws one at net. That's gobbled up by the goaltender. They whip it around now. Do the Alpacas. It's the Alpacas v. the Warriors here. as the Warriors have control down in the zone. That's Tyler Scram there, number 25. Make that Shram. Marcus is away. There is an opportunity, first scoring opportunity of the day, as the Alpacas look to find Marcus going, streaking to the side of the net. That's team captain there, number four, lining up. The Warriors are up as both teams change. Unable to generate anything there. Clear the zone, they do. Oh, he trips over himself. Ball is deep now as Hope goes back to get it. He maintains control, throws it up the half boards. 94 clearing it out for the Warriors, and now they do get it out down the length of the floor. However, it was on the right side of the blue line, so icing is immediately waved off. There's Dan, number four. That shot gets deflected, go up and over. Dan, clearly, one hand on the stick there, and it was right in front of the referee, gives the player a shot just for good measure. But it was easy there for the referee to see that infraction. Quite obviously had his stick right around, or sorry, had his hand right around the stick of the other player. And as such, we have a power play here. 
Power play for the Niagara Warriors against the Alpacas. Alpacas, four men. Warriors, five. 8-10 to go. Penalty will be done at 6-10, barring a goal. As the puck comes down to the point now, there's a little move. Loses the handle. The ball goes into the corner. Some tough ball hockey so far as bodies are being played. No icing as the Alpacas are down a man here. First power play of the day to the Niagara Warriors who are mounting to get attack. Here's Hope. He's got a winger with him. Loses his stick on the forecheck, but is able to Pele one back. And the back referee calls that penalty. I don't know about that one. I'm sure they won't, won't be too happy going down two men on that. It, it was a rush. He was rushing with the ball, had one hand on his stick, and the slash came to the shaft of the stick and knocked it right out of his hands. Putting the, uh, the vicious alpacas down two men early on. This will be a five-on-three power play for the next minute 32. 7.42 to go. First penalty was at 8.10. Alpacas just looking to get control and then get the ball down. Too much room out there, though, for them not to take advantage, especially in ball hockey with the floating blue line, allowing the defenseman to go all the way back to the red as they look to go back door, and they do find a man there. They're way out of position, though, for, for a scoring opportunity. Back to the point for Weir. He winds up, takes one through. There's Johnny on the spot on the rebound. Nice cover, though, by the goaltender. First real test of the day for the goaltender for the Vicious Alpacas. Start up again, five on three power play. Here's Ashley on the point. He finds his partner, Weir winds up. Another good shot, another good save. Bodies falling everywhere in front as they look to, to control the ball. Ashley now is able to get control for the Warriors. Looking to set up, five on three power play. Tries to slide one through the rink, through the crease rather. The goaltender able to get the paddle out on that one and deflect the ball up and into the mesh. 7.55 to go here. The first penalty will be done at 6.10. So 45 seconds from now, it'll be five on four and five on four for about 28 seconds before the other penalty expires. So good opportunity here, 45 seconds left of five on three action. There's a shot that sails just wide. Little move there off the left point by number 94. Still has control behind the net, has control again. Looking to generate something, looking to find somebody who's open. Right now though, all his teammates appear to be on the perimeter. He finds one of them, back at the point. There's a shot, goes wide, there's the rebound, back to the net. And it's in. One nothing now, Niagara Warriors over the Vicious Alpacas, scoring the goal on the five on three man advantage. Just too much room, too much space out there. Bit of a lucky break as the initial shot from the point actually went wide, but it was Johnny on the spot there on the far side. What do we got, number 94 I believe, Taylor Dobbin. It is Taylor Dobbin. He's been able to one-time that ball as it came off the backboards into what was a wide open net to give his team the advantage. Five on four action here. That'll be over at 542 when the tripping penalty expires. Tripping penalty, interference penalty, or something along those lines. Just a two-minute infraction. Niagara Warriors throw the ball all the way down the floor, though. That's flooring. 28 seconds left now. In the five on four advantage. Warriors scoring there, courtesy of Taylor Dobbin. Giving them the one nothing advantage. Stun him, over to Dobbin. Dobbin runs over the blue line, throws it up to the left wing. The ball is out now, however, as it's cleared the blue line. Warriors looking to gain the zone, but so far unable to. There's Dan stepping up, just takes that in the shin pads. Didn't phase him. Dunham, though. Conway now with the ball. He circles, start moving in the right direction. Finally, the ball does go deep. And it's Dan for the Alpacas. He's able to throw it around. Here's an opportunity now. Wow, surprised the referees didn't find a call there, especially given the fact that the Alpacas were just down two men, and that appeared to be a scoring opportunity that was taken away. 
29 now for the Alpacas. That's Mike Croto. Powder. A lot of you snow him as. Dan for the Alpacas looks to move in. You got a couple of number fours out there. The other one being Ryan Metalena. That is Ryan, the aforementioned, battling for the ball. Has control. Powder. Over to Dan, up the boards. Will he be able to chase it down? And he's unable to do so, and that will go the length for flooring. Boy, oh boy, just one step away from a golden opportunity, probably a two-on-one there for the Alpacas. Uh, but that pass was just beyond the reach of Justin Juritzma. It's Justin Juritzma wearing number 68. There's already been a lot of physicality in this game quite early on. Five minutes, 13 seconds gone here in the first period. There will be three 10 minutes, 10 minute periods. If the score is tied after that in the preliminary rounds, there will be no overtime. It will just be recorded as a tie. However, when we get into the playoffs on Sunday, that will not be the case. There will be some overtime and shootouts. Marcus now running for that ball. Slagerstrom picking it up, trying to throw something through to a man who is streaking back door. Matt Weir, though, had a stick in the right position. The ball ends up in the bench of the Niagara Warriors. And we've got a face-off coming out just outside the Warriors zone. 17 now, squaring up to take the draw. That's Paul Nahara for the Warriors. Wins the ball forward. However, it's possessed by the Alpacas. There's Lagerstrom trying to find his centerman. Tyler Schramm playing the off wing here. Right-handed shot on the left wing. Marcus, a left-handed shot on the right wing. Specifically for this reason, the one-timer. That looked to be a golden opportunity. The best chance so far for the Alpacas. Kieran Horton, 77, took a fan on that. As the D go D to D in their own zone. Now far side, over to Scram, was unable to corral that ball. As it's shot down by Ashley the length of the floor. And the referee blows his whistle to indicate flooring. The ball hockey version of icing. The result is the same. As Denny Lemieux once said, the play stop, then start up again. And that is exactly what it's doing. With 3.59 to go in the first period. Sheldon Thomas, 91 for the Alpacas. He's lining up to take the draw, and he wins it. Back to the left-hand point. Quick dump into the corner. Two 91s out here now. One of them being Sheldon Thomas. The other, Cody Hollingsworth. My apologies, I think it was Hollingsworth there who has the ball now, who took the draw. Nearly able to move that over to his forehand for a chance, unable to though. And now it's shot down deep by the Warriors, who are able to wrestle that ball away from the goaltender. Goaltender now being peppered. Lots of action now in front. Ball ends up behind the net. Still though, things appear to be scrambly on both sides. And now the ball is taken away and controlled by the Alpacas. But quickly, they give it away. And Dunham throws the ball away. Back and forth action here. Nice little dangle. Ah, almost able to dangle through. Two defensemen was number seven there and get a scoring opportunity, but maybe a little too much. As a long shot comes in from the point, goaltender didn't see it to the last second. Didn't matter, though, as it sailed wide. Here's an opportunity. There's Hollingsworth. One move, two moves. Jamming away at it, still in front. And you see Dunham there coming in. And both teams not shy to take the body. When there's a scramble, defensemen on both sides appear to be targeting the body more so than the ball and just clearing bodies. And thus far, the referees are allowing them to do so, but it appears to be going both ways and fair both ways. Warriors now throwing the ball in the air. Gloved out, though, by 55, who whacks it out of the air and down back to Dunham. D to D go the Warriors. Nice little between-the-legs pass there by number 55. Gets a cheer from the bench. That's Chris Williams, number 55. As the goaltender smartly holds on to that ball as it bounces off the backboards. Referee blows his whistle with two and a half minutes to go in the first period. We will have a face-off just to the left of the Vicious Alpacas goaltender. Ashley back at the point now. Throws a pass off the boards. Conway wasn't able to handle it. 
Alpac is now fighting for control as the ball gets booted back in. We got Dan there, team leader, going D to D over to number 55. That's Chris Williams. And here's an opportunity now as they break out three strong, only two defenders. It's back, backhand pass, beautiful opportunity, a nice save. There's another whack at it. Justin Jaritzma getting a couple of whacks at that, and the goaltender just standing up. That's Moffitt between the pipes. Jordan Moffitt playing goal there for the Niagara Warriors. Had to make his best saves of the game so far. Off Justin Jaritzma. And it was a beautiful behind-the-back pass from Ryan Metalena. People not really expecting it. And it wasn't just the behind-the-back pass, but it was also the quality of the pass. As it ended up being the right speed and right into the shooting path for Justin Dorit, who ended up getting a good scoring opportunity. one nothing lead here for the Niagara Warriors. They're wearing the black, at least the darks, as that shot goes off the post. Great scoring opportunity there. That was 77. Hit the post on that play. Alpac is getting close, but so far they can't crack the goaltender, or the post for that matter, as Scram is buying, biding his time now in his own zone. Throwing it far side, that gets picked off on the bounce. Everybody collapsing now for the Alpacas as the ball gets rolled out in front. Goaltender had his stick in the proper position. As such, he's able to gobble that up, suck it up like a Hoover, put his mid on it, and with a buck 19 to go here, in the first period and his teammates trailing one nothing goaltender just covers things up and we will have a face off deep in the alpaca zone it's alpacas in the red niagara warriors in the dark if you can't make it out i i call it a black and a green camo but it's really not what it is but it's black and green and white design scramble off the draw eventually goes back into the alpacas corner Hollingsworth now fighting for it. Loses control. He gets a shove from Morris, and he gives it right back. There's a nice little over-under by 91 on the rush, who regains control. He's had two men on him, somehow emerges with the ball, but it just gets away with him, and the Warriors are able to clear. All the way down the ice now, and hard on the forward check is number 15. Smartly, though, they go D to D. Over to 55, Chris Williams. He finds Hollingsworth in the middle. Back to the point now. Stringing together a few passes are the Alpacas, but still... Haven't been able to penetrate the zone as Hollingsworth, that deflected away from him. Otherwise, he would have had a two-on-one break. Looking to spring somebody now. Another behind-the-back pass. Little room now for 91. That's Sheldon Thomas. Dumping it in for the other 91, Hollingsworth. He's in the corner battling hard. Sheldon in to help out. He's a big body. He's got three men on him. Finds an open man. Riley now looks to flip it by Chris Williams is unable to do so didn't get it up enough and quickly it's turned around here's an opportunity now around the net throws the ball in front people looking for it you hear it now two one no time and he does not get the shot off when he does though he does beat the goaltender but as you could hear quite plainly the shot came after the buzzer which means the ball entered the net after the buzzer so at the end of one period we have the Niagara Warriors up on the Vicious Alpacas, 1-0. Now to recap the first period, early on the referees uh, called two quick penalties, 30 seconds apart against the Vicious Alpacas. That gave the Warriors a 90-second two-man advantage, and about 60 seconds in, they took advantage. Off the backboards, the rebound came out to a wide-open player. It was uh, Taylor Dobbin, and he's able to fire that into the back of the net, and uh, that's uh, what gets us to where we are. One nothing lead now for the Niagara Warriors as the goaltenders and the teams switch in. Here's Jaritzma, Aaron Pass, Riley picks it up on the far side. Able to hold the zone, not for long though. Back to the point, Dan moves it up through the middle. And just like that, Dan's got it back again in his own corner. Backhander now off the wall. As the teams play catch back and forth, trying to string together passes, just unable to do so. There's Jaritzma trying to make a move on Matt Weir. He put his foot though down in the right spot. 
This time, though, not as lucky as Dorit Smith is able to get around him. Will he find the man at the side of the net? No. Instead, cleverly tries to throw it on the net. Does. Rebound now. Here's an opportunity. Trying to kick it in. And the defense of the Niagara Warriors bending, but not breaking at this point. one nothing advantage is what they're clinging to. D to D now. That's Nahara. Back and forth. Looking into the middle. Finds a centerman streaking. Quickly throws it down. Little dump and chase here. The Alpacas end up with the ball out of all that. Back to Jaritsma. Loses the ball, gets kicked down to the other end of the zone. And the Niagara Warriors, quick on the attack. There's Billiard, hard in. Billiard, hard in again on the attack. Right now, doing yeoman's work, one on two on the forecheck. And a couple of Aaron sticks there. Billiard, though, with the hard back check. That stick came up, clipped him right in the face. Getting a little sloppy there with the sticks. It'll be interesting to see what the referees decide here, whether that's a two or four minute penalty. Billiard was chasing him from behind after the hard four check and took a bit of a careless whack at him. Um, he wasn't trying to get the stick high, but with one stick, you just or one hand on the stick rather, you just don't have the control that you would want. And as he slid out and stretched his stick out with just one hand, it actually rode up the shaft of the other player and then ended up catching him just in the mouth or at least in the face area, somewhere above the shoulders with the blade of the stick. Recovering on the bench, though, do, does it appear to be any blood or anything like that? 8.24 left to go in the second period. 6.24 if it's a two-minute power, if it's a two-minute penalty. 4.24 if it's a four-minute penalty. In ball hockey, quite often, not sure about the tournament rules, but quite often high sticks are automatic four minutes. Since nobody's wearing any facial protection, any headgear, any real equipment, especially waist up, uh, they're really trying to protect their players as well they can. And, and so the penalties are rather harsh, as they should be. DDD now for the Alpacas. Here's an opportunity. Wine shot and a goal. Powder finding the back of the net. And just like that, the score is tied one all, and rightly so, too. This game has been even. The Niagara Warriors got their goal and a five-on-three advantage, so turnabout is fair play. And with the man advantage, the Alpacas find the back of the net. Adam Fortin playing right D there. Saw that the defense, shorthanded, was pressuring him a little too much, overcommitted, and so slid the ball over for a perfect shot from Powder. He hammered it, found the back of the net. Obviously, that was just a two-minute high-sticking call as teams are back to five-on-five five ball hockey action here. Riley up the boards. Ice is on. Referee blows his whistle. With 7.50 to go, game tied at one. We'll have a face-off deep in the Niagara Warriors zone. Jordan Moffitt, goaltender for the Niagara Warriors. You see him there with the white and black pads and the white and black helmet to boot. Hollingsworth now getting set for the draw for the Alpacas. Does not win it. Warriors take over, take control. Hope has it, hoping to find somebody. Has a man streaking up the wing, puts it right on his tape. That's our goal scorer, Taylor Dobbin. Defenseman now moving in, but smartly the Warriors have covered up. 69 in, there's a one-timer from the point. Goaltender, though, calmly takes that off the chest, directs the, uh, the rebound into the corner. Turnover now, Sheldon Thomas with some good wheels, finds number seven over to Hollingsworth, but just a little too ambitious with that pass. Give on go attempt, give and go attempt rather. High backhander now into the neutral zone. Team's looking for the ball. 69 now. Momentarily had control for the Warriors, but that was taken away by Chris Williams. Good defensive game so far for Williams there, playing dead, uh, playing defense rather, number 55 in red. Again, that high shot handled coolly, calmly by goaltender, number 30. Here's an opportunity now. That's Jesse Susie, number seven. Pretty good line there with Hollingsworth, Sheldon Thomas, Jesse Susie. Getting some good pressure for the Alpacas. Changing them up, though. Justin Juritsma coming out to play forward for the Alpacas in red, along with Ryan Matalena, 
uh, number four. Third forward for your Alpacas on this shift is number 78. That's Mike Khalidi. As the ball goes back to their goal scorer, Powder. He, though, stands his ground. They get behind him. Lestraco now leads the two-on-two. Two. Ended up being a three-on-three. Three. Found the high man for an opportunity, but the ball never made it through to the net. That ball did, though, and from a long ways out, but the goaltender down in the butterfly to steer that aside. Both teams here showing a lot of determination, some good skill. It's a tight game, but not without scoring opportunities as that pass attempt gets blocked and ends up being deflected into the mesh behind the net. We'll restart to the right of Jordan Moffitt. 6.06 to go in the second period. We find ourselves deadlocked at one here. This is the opening game in the round robin for both of these teams. This is the road to the World Outdoor Ball Hockey Championships in St. Catharines. Video and production courtesy of WeStream. As the Warriors win the face off to an open wing, that gets deflected deep into the zone. Goaltender covers up and we'll start up again. Back to the point where Ashley has it. Just gets the puck deep as he was under pressure. Finds a teammate in Riley, who's circling behind the net, throws something right through the crease, but nobody able to get anything on it. Controlling the ball now are the Warriors. There's a little slide through the net. Warriors are onside, but the ball just out of their reach, and the Alpacas, Powder, fires one of his teammates. Wonder if they'll have something to say to him when he comes back to the bench. Gives us a stoppage in play, though, and for the Alpacas, an opportunity to roll their lines and change things up again. We've got Marcus Lagerstrom there, Tyler Scram coming out. Kieran Horton. Horton, here's a who, lining up in center. There for Alpacas. Up against Ferguson for the Warriors. Ferguson wins it, wins it back to the other Dom, and it takes a shot. Looks like that hit the knob of the goaltender's stick. Players hate those saves. As that ball goes all the way down the floor. Mark is trying to get there, though, before across the line. Unable to do so. And it's flooring with 5.22 to go. There's a hard shot that gets blocked in front. Billiard now throws it deep into the corner. Here's an opportunity for Marcus. Plays it off the boards behind him. Finds Scram sneaking in. Oh, there's a chance as well. That gets deflected wide. It looked like Schram was going to have a tap in, but good play on the defense, and it was somehow able to get something in the way of that pass and just gum up. The entire play that was set up quite nicely from a nice pass and a nice read by Marcus to uh, play it behind him, let the ball play behind him off the boards. Here's an opportunity, tries to go, then it's in the back of the net. Referee signals that that is a good goal. It was Jesse Susie there at the side of the net who had a good opportunity, had the ball in his forehand, but he was in real tight, not much of an angle, tried to go high, looks like it hit the goaltender Moffitt in the mask. And then after that, everybody kind of lost sight of the ball, except one man. It was 77 there, Kieran Horton, who was able to slide in behind everybody and find the ball that had made its way just in behind the goaltender but had yet to cross the goal line. And, well, he made sure that he did that. And now 2-1 advantage for the Vicious Alpacas, who with two goals in a row have taken control of this game and lead 2-1 over the Niagara Warriors. And there's Susie. Goes far side there to 91, Sheldon Thomas. He looks to throw it in front of the net and does, but it's swept away. Thomas again dangerously. That's why he threw the puck in deep, or the ball rather. Ferguson finds his sediment in the middle. There's a long shot. Sails just wide. Alpaca's defenseman picks it up. Finds Susie right through the middle. It wouldn't surprise me if he does exactly that. He's quick. Oh, and just unable to solve the goaltender. I'm surprised. That that's, there's one right off the, I would say the, post of the crossbar it appears to have hit probably right in the corner right where the post meets the crossbar two golden opportunities there for the vicious alpacas as this game is opening up just a little bit 
That's Sheldon Thomas again. He works into the middle, throws one on net. Jeff Susi. That was a nice little leap there as he hurdles the goal, made the save and held on to it. I'm surprised the, uh, the defenseman there for the Niagara Warriors didn't respect the speed there of Jeff Susi, who's been tearing it up so far in the first, well, half of this game with 345. We're just beyond the halfway mark. As soon as he got the ball, you knew that he had the leg speed to get by him, and the only play they had was to try and get the ball, and he just smartly flipped it up in front of him and then won the foot race. Ended up with a breakaway out of it, and great save by Moffat on the other end. As the Warriors look to get one for their goaltender, pick him up a bit. Lestracco behind the net. Over to number four. He's looking to walk out of the corner of his forehand, throws something dangerously in front, just misses the far post. It's Nohara now. Look at his stake out of the corner. Ball just rolls off the end of his stick. And now the other way, that's Jaritsma coming down on his off wing. Goes to his backhand, tries to find somebody in front, but it wasn't doing. Nohara back the other way, running well. Teammate finds him into the zone now. But again, ball just off his blade and into the corner. Back and forth action here with three minutes to go in the second period. Vicious Alpacas in red with an opportunity, 78 down the wing. He fires that way wide. I'm sure he would have wanted that one back. That was Mark Khalidi on the opportunity. Here's Doritzman now, loses the ball in his feet and that creates an odd man rush. However, good back checking there by Khalidi, takes that away as the ball gets shot into the corner. Lestracco now fires something. Don't think the goaltender saw that, but it hit him, so that's a save. Powder throwing it up. That stays in, but not for long. Three on one opportunity now. Oh, there was a pass right through the slot and Khalidi just unable to get his, get his stick on it. Back and forth action here. It's Lestracco leading the rush. He tried to find the open man in the slot. He wasn't able to do so. And now the goal scorer, one of the goal scorers. He fires it, and then Marcus finds it, finds Tyler Scram coming right off the bench. That's Kieran Horton looking for his second goal thus far, number 77, along with Marcus Lagerstrom, who throws it back to the point. Number nine now carrying it in. Marcus turns, shoots, right on net. Hit him right in the crest. But good action and good pressures here, or pressure rather, by the Vicious Alpacas. Niagara Warriors took control of this game early on. They scored the first goal of the game on a two-man advantage about two and a half minutes into this game to make it 1-0. And early on, they appeared to be the better team. But since then, the scales have tipped completely, and the score has. 2-1 lead now with a buck 55 to go. Vicious Alpacas leading the Niagara Warriors. There's a clever play by number nine on defense. Gets his stick held momentarily there, coming out of that scrum by Billiard. Wanted a call, didn't get it. That ball ends up deflecting off Dunham and into the corner. Dunham goes back to retrieve. Up to Conway now on the left side. He's thinking about shooting, and he does. But it does not get by Chris Williams. Williams now, number 55 for the Alpacas. He throws it up to Susie. Let's see if they respect the speed and skill of Susie. They do. They play him quite well that time. Keep him in check. Here's a long shot from right on the red line. That's deflected into the corner. D to D now. Over to Chris Williams. However, that was a turnover right by the player's bench. Had to be careful. They make sure they didn't have too many men. Referee was on it. Quick little pass now up to Hollingsworth, who's showing some speed down the side. He plays the body well, positions himself well, does Hollingsworth, and gets rewarded with a scoring opportunity out of it. And all the Warriors are able to do is throw the ball the length of the ice for flooring. Unlike ice hockey, you are allowed to change after a flooring. Also, unlike ice hockey, at least at the NHL level, if a player ends up throwing the ball out of play, like over the glass in his own zone, that is not a penalty. So a couple of opportunities here if you are being shelled to uh, get a new line out there and a fresh start and uh, just reset for your squad. And the Niagara Warriors did exactly that. And now they're back on the attack. 69 now showing some legs. Left shot playing the right wing. Throws it back to the point. Goal scorer, Taylor Dobbin. He throws something at the net. Goaltender, though, plays that off his chest. Back to the point. Warriors throw it in. Hope has it on his forehand. Takes a shot. Gets deflected off the stick of powder. Up into the mesh. Face off coming up deep in the vicious alpaca zone. There's an opportunity right off the draw. Ball's still loose. Body's falling. 
There's an opportunity on the wraparound. Ball still available. Somebody trying to get a, get a hand on it. They cannot do it. There's Susie with another move. Good wheels. Walks right in. Boy, oh boy. Jeff Susie doing real well so far. Not only able to hit top speed, but able to hit top speed while stick handling at the same time and making some good moves. Single-handedly, he's been able to generate one or two scoring opportunities for the Alpacas, but so far, nothing to show for. However, his team is leading 2-1 with 10.9 seconds to go. Let's see if they can win the draw and set up for a quick opportunity here. Fighting for it, they do get a quick chance. Susie on the turnaround with 6.7 seconds, uh, 6 .7 seconds left to go in the, uh, in the second period. Still a lot of time left on the clock for a scoring chance and maybe even a rebound. Susie on the draw. It appears to be Nohara. That is Nohara. Gives Susie a nice cross check off the draw. The Warriors appear to be giving it to Susie here. Susie gives him one back, and rightly so. Should be a, an incredible third period here. Third period of ball hockey at ballhockey.com athletic center. Both teams showing a lot of hustle, a lot of effort, and a lot of skill out here. And with the score being tight, I imagine that both these teams will try everything in their power to try and win this, being the opener here in the round robin. Don't want to start off a tournament, 0-1. Put yourself behind the eight ball right away. 2-1 now, Alpacas in red, leading the Niagara Warriors in the dark jerseys. Horton back to the point. That's Chris Williams with the shot. Hits something in front. Deflects wide. Horton, though, gets the rebound. Fires just wide. Riley now for the Niagara Warriors. Regains control. Gives it to Matt Weir on the point. Tries to clear the zone. Can't do so. It's Horton again on the sideboards. Trying to find Marcus backdoor. Didn't have the accuracy there that he was looking for. And again, Warriors unable to clear. There's a move by Horton. Throws it back, trying to go back door to Marcus, and just not there. Warriors were wise to that play, back door to Marcus Lagerstrom, and they took it away. As Riley mounts a bit of an attack now, tries to find a teammate in front. As the Warriors change, creates a lot of running room here for Hollingsworth, but he has the ball taken away from him. Now it's number nine on the back end as they go D to D over to Powder. He's got a goal tonight. Trying to tell one of his men to cut through the middle, and they do, but the pass just a little bit in front. Hollingsworth, Sheldon, Susie out there, trying to generate something. Good opportunity there by Sheldon. Put it in a good spot, but a better save. Warriors now looking to get it out. Lots of pressure right now by the Alpacas. Trying to break through. There's Susie with another chance, and that's a good goal. That's a great goal. Susie's been everywhere thus far. He took the initial shot. Just went wide, but it was high and it bounced off the backboards and came back just outside the net and was probably a little above waist high but still below the crossbar and Hollingsworth was able to hit a home run on that one. 
swung the stick, banged it right out of midair, right into the back of the net. And now the Alpacas with a bit of a cushion with 7.54 to go in the third period. They have now grabbed a 3-1 lead over the Niagara Warriors. Again, Alpacas in red, Warriors in the dark jerseys. As play continues now, deep in the corner, Billiard has been a physical force all night for the Niagara Warriors. However, he has taken a penalty today, a penalty that the Alpacas did score on, so not everything working in his favor, and he'll take another penalty now, Will Billiard, costing his team again, just being a little too aggressive and putting his stick in the wrong place. Conway slamming his stick, a little upset with that penalty, and both penalties so far by Billiard, I would deem as a little careless. First one with a careless stick, and that time just putting his stick in a silly place. Nothing could come of that other than tripping the defenseman. That's what happened. It was an easy call for the referee, and now the Alpacas, already with a two-goal lead, go on the man advantage. It's Juritsma now in the corner, looking to walk out, throws something, hits the side of the net. Taylor Dobbin picks it up and is able to wind that around the boards, full length of the floor, but no icing because they are shorthanded. Five on four hockey here, 7.13 to go in the third period. It's Powder, looks far side to Juritsma. He goes far side, but that's intercepted by Lestraco. He stepped up quite nicely. Still has control of the ball, deep in the zone. Even though they're shorthanded, Warriors have to be thinking about a goal here if the opportunity presents itself. Lestraco is looking to make something out of nothing. Juritsma just throws it. Down deep into the zone, goes to the bench for a change. Lagerstrom comes out, we got Lagerstrom, we got Schramm out there, and I imagine Horton will be right behind them. As Dan steps up into 94, Taylor Dobbin. Here's an opportunity for Lagerstrom, he wins the battle. Ball though, just goes in the wrong direction. Chris Williams now 55 back to play, but the goaltender instead shovels it over to Dan. He throws it, there is Horton as predicted, he came out to join his two line mates here, Schramm and Lagerstrom. Ball, though, just deflected into the bench of the Niagara Warriors. We'll have a face-off coming up just outside the blue line. 3-1 lead here, Alpacas, 6.26 to go in the third period. Williams able to keep it in with his foot there at the blue line. Over to nine, playing catch now, back and forth the defenseman arm. Power play here for the Alpacas. That's why they have a little bit of room and are able to move the ball around. Williams, though, look to one touch at pass. Ball got away from him a little bit. Good read by Ashley. He's able to run into that ball. Now they find themselves alone in the net in front of the Warriors. Oh! And the move to the backhand. And the ball just going a little high as he looks skyward. Trying to figure out who that was on the chance there. It might have been Nohara. It was Riley who found himself all alone in front, but with his back to the goal, didn't really know what to do. And then he saw that Nohara was coming in, a right-hand shot uh, on his forehand. So he left the ball to him. And Nohara probably made a nice play. Uh, sorry, that was Hope making a nice play, going forehand to backhand and then trying to go top shelf. But uh, his top shelf was a little higher than the goaltenders. And as such, it went over the net into the meshing. Nobody touched it, face off just outside the zone, face off that's won by the Warriors, and once again, here's Ashley leading the shorthanded charge. Back into the middle against Riley, Ashley picks it up, throws something at the net, way too high though. Chris Williams takes a swipe at it, misses. Riley pretty much runs over his back, when Williams appeared to trip there. Riley doing some great work, pretty much taking on two guys out of the corner, and he still has the ball. Here's Ashley now coming in from the point, all he's gotta do is find him. Can't, however. The penalty has expired to Billiard, who is out and positions himself right in front of the net. There's Billiard again. A little reckless out there with his stick. He's been in the box twice already. Hollingsworth with a nice soft pass to Susie. Susie's looking for something, can't find it. It's Ashley that intercepts the ball, throws it over to Hope. Sheldon Thomas, though, picks it up, finds Hollingsworth. He throws it towards the net, trying to connect with Susie. Can't do so. Hope, though, slaps at it on the backhand all the way down to Powder. Off the boards, now over to Sheldon Thomas. He's got Susie in the slot. He's looking to turn the corner. Can't do so. Hope was able to take away body position on that and now takes away the ball. Hope might be looking for a call. Sheldon Thomas obviously doesn't like the way he's playing. He's playing the body pretty hard there, but nothing over the line. 
As it's Ashley now with control. He goes through the middle, tape to tape. 69 there, got a stick on it. Tyler Morris, able to get the ball deep. Here is Morris now, looks to spin on his backhand, find his teammate out front, but can't do it. Alpacas, though, throw it. Not the length of the floor. However, buys him enough time to get a change, wholesale change there for the Alpacas as the shot goes off the back of the ball, hockey.com referee. Here's a chance now, three on two rush. That's over to the far side to Juritsma. Looking to find Khalidi. A little too far from him, however. Slid through for Khalidi, who was unable to catch up with that pass. The Warriors throw it, not too hard though. Almost the length of the ice, but anything to avoid a flooring. Over to Dan now. D to D, they go. He goes to the backhand, moves it up to Juritsma on the uh, right wing. His move though, failed him. So Riley gains control. <coughs> 325 now to go in the third period. Been a while since a whistle. Lots of action here. Ballhockey.com in St. Catharines. There's a shot at the net, and there you go. That whistle I was calling for just came as Moffitt just swallows up that ball. And with 317 to go in the third period, Niagara Warriors have to start wondering what they can do to break through the defense here of the Alpacas. They've had chances, but I would say that there has been no consistency uh, to their rush. I can't say necessarily that dumping and chasing and working, that beating guys one-on-one -on -one is working, or trying to pressure their D. However, they have been able to, to generate some scoring opportunities, and I imagine that there will still be one or two opportunities here for the Niagara Warriors to try and make this a one-goal game. And here we go. It's Riley now up the boards. He gets the zone. Back to the point. Here's a one-timer from their goal scorer, Tyler Dobbin. That gets deflected just wide and is sitting on the back of the net as the players fight for it. Goaltender able to smother it. Referee rightly blows the whistle. And we'll have a face-off just to the left. 3.04 to go and mention a lot of opportunities for scoring chances. And Taylor Dobbin there allowed to walk into about the blue line and let go the slap shot of his choice. The Alpacas win the draw. Looked to ring it over to Marcus Lagerstrom, but the ball itself was lagging a little bit. However, the Alpacas still retain control. Nine now, running it up. Ill-advised pass, gets picked off in his own zone. Finally does clear the zone, and Powder finishes the job, getting the ball deep into the Warriors' zone as Schramm goes in. He's able to chip it back to Horton. Horton goes right over to Marcus. That just sails over his stick. Back to the point. Here's a one-timer from Powder. That's in the back of the net, and that's a goal. No goal. No goal, says the referee. I guess too many feet in the blue paint. I mean, not the blue paint, but in the crease. You see the, the crease is clearly marked there. And it hit something on the way in. Derek Chapman, referee making the call there. Had a better view than all of us, so probably the right call. And don't appear to be too many complaints on either side. That shot, though, hit something on its way through. Looked like Schramm was able to get a stick on it as he was celebrating after the goal. Right off the draw, there's an opportunity. Just sails wide, however. 2.23 to go, here's an opportunity. Three on two momentarily for the Warriors, but that was taken away. Here's a two on one now. We got Schramm and Lagerstrom. Over to Lagerstrom. Oh! That pass just a little too far behind Schramm, who was unable to slow down and pick that up. Nevertheless, still leading 3 1. If they get away with this with the W and the two points, I imagine that will be mission accomplished, no matter what the score. Deep now in the, car, in the corner for the Warriors, who pulled their goaltender. Moffitt is out of the net. Six attackers now for the Niagara Warriors who trail by two. 3-1 here with under two minutes to go. Six attackers on five. Open net here for the Alpacas to shoot at, but only if they get control. That's Ashley over to Dunham. He winds up from a long way. And he's... No, the referee says no goal. From our angle, it looked like it was no goal. It looked like that hit a couple of things on the way to the net and then hit the crossbar. That looked crossbar to me. Videographer, what did you see? Sorry. Sorry. 
We didn't see it go in, no. It didn't look in for us. That didn't look in from here. It'll be interesting to see on the replay. I imagine that uh, most of these guys <laughs> will be interested in seeing that and, uh, and will be peeled and looking for replay after replay. By the way, all these games are available on YouTube through our account at WeStream. Please subscribe to us. Timeout now being called by the Niagara Warriors. Look at a regroup. A minute 20 to go in the third period. They need two goals. Nearly got one there. They're arguing that they did. Uh, to me, just the way that that puck corralled, it, it looked as though it deflected right off the underside of the crossbar. And when it bounced, it appeared to bounce on this side of the goal line. If you say if it bounced on the other side, how could it possibly come out? Well, that's one of the wrinkles of ball hockey as well, is that the ball has spin. And just like sometimes at a soccer game, you can hit the crossbar, have the ball go down, and then actually come back out of the net. Same thing can happen in ball hockey, especially on those plays. But that's not what I saw. It appeared to hit the crossbar, came down outside of the net, and then stayed outside of the net. Getting set now. Minute 20 to go. Frenzied action here in the third period. Alpacas fire the length of the, length of the floor. Just wide, however. Warriors regain possession. Give it away, though. There's a shot, but it's saved. Up to Dobbin. He spins, finds Ashley. That ball just bounds behind the net. Warriors first on the scene. That's Billiard there. Few whacks there from Ashley. Warriors have it. This is going at the net, and it does go at the net, and that was a beautiful stop. Got his pad on that, made a stop. Billiard in front of the net, looking to position himself. Getting a lot of sticks on the back. Dan and Billiard right now just pushing. I'm watching the game within a game, and that's fun to watch. Susie, lots of wheels into the corner. Tries to score from a real sharp angle on the open net. Unable to do so. Now the Warriors turn out the other way with 23 seconds to go. Two goals at this point. Going to be very hard to ask for, but hey, it all starts with one. Riley finds. A slashing call now coming to one of the teams, not exactly sure who. It is going to go to the Alpacas. That's Dan there, kind of the team leader. He was giving it pretty good there with Billiard back and forth. Doesn't surprise you that one of them got called. So now, interestingly, we will have six on four action for, well, 13 and a half seconds, and unless they score. But right now, the Warriors need two goals, so any chance of that means this first goal has to come very fast, pretty much right off the draw. Uh, it appears as though they're putting Ashley in. He's directing his shooter. Don't know why they wouldn't try and win this draw to the center of the ice. Either way, they lose the draw. That shot deflects off the back of the referee, keeping it in the zone. But as we wind down here under five seconds, Hollingsworth just going to kill the clock in the corner. Lagerstrom fires it down, and that's that. 3-1 is your final score. Vicious Alpacas against Niagara Warriors. If you only watched the first period, you may have thought to yourself that the Warriors had this thing under control. They scored the opening goal on a five-on-three advantage. And the Alpacas didn't get on the board until the second period when they had a man advantage of their own. But as soon as they scored that goal, the momentum seemed to swing. And next thing you know, Alpacas found themselves with many more scoring opportunities than the Niagara Warriors. Final score, 3-1. That does it for this evening. Tomorrow, 9 a.m. till 9 p.m., 12 hours of live streamed ball hockey right here on